Assuming this is the length of the intestine and there is a small perforation or break. Normally, a perforation will be a round hole with mucosa popping out from inside. We can see there is a hole in the intestine. Before we start suturing, there are some principles that we have to follow. If the hole is too close to the mesenteric border, you will have to resect and anastomose the two segments. But if it is on the anti-mesenteric border and a small perforation of 0.5 to 1 cm, we will go for primary closure of the perforation. Now any perforation, be it in any direction or orientation, the primary objective is to suture perpendicularly. If we suture along the axis of the ball, there is a possibility of it getting kinked and the lumen will be compromised. Whereas, if we suture perpendicularly, as suggested, the lumen will increase in size, so which will give it added advantage and safety. The first way to suture is that we start from beyond the perforation and take simple interrupted sutures. So from beyond, we are coming inside and from inside, we are going out. And then again, from inside, we are coming out on the same level. We have taken simple interrupted sutures, but you could have also taken continuous interlocking sutures. Again, the maneuver is, from outside, we go inside the lumen and come out again. We should only leave 3 to 4 mm of thread and not more than that. Again, from outside into the lumen of the bowel and coming out. And from there, we are again going inside and coming out. Be it any intestinal perforation or gastric perforation, we have to always suture it perpendicular to the axis of the ball. Another advantage is that there is less compromise of the blood supply because the blood supply will come from the mesentery and will traverse perpendicular to the axis.
Make sure while we are taking this blind stretch, we are not taking the posterior wall of the intestine, otherwise we will cause obstruction of the lumen. This is the second technique to close the perforation. This is the axis of your bowel and again we will be suturing perpendicular to it. The perforation is approximately 1 cm in size. Again we will start from beyond and come out from the center. And again, we will go beyond and come up. But here, we will not be tying the knots. And instead, we will hold the ends with an artery forceps and we will cut the thread. We will repeat the same step by going inside from one end and coming out from the other end. And again, hold it using an artery forcep. And we will cut the thread. Then again, we will repeat the same step by going inside from one end and coming out from the other end. And one last suture that we will take we will go from beyond and come out from the center and then again go out in the end we can always cut the needle and discard it so here we have our four layers of sutures which are covering our perforation. So now we will start by suturing the ends first. We will start by suturing the edges and secure them. We will do a primary instrument tie. Once we are done with the suture, we will cut it. Now again, we will suture the lower end. We start again by a simple instrument tie. And finish by cutting it. We need to be very careful that we are not mixing the threads while suturing in this type of technique.
Now we'll come again in the center and repeat the same step. The advantage of this technique is that we can see all the edges while taking our sutures. Unlike the previous technique, we do not need to take a blind suture. Instead, all sutures are taken under your vision. We will repeat the same step for the final suture. So this is how it should look. 